Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at the Yakima on ramp 2 bike platform rack right here on our 2021 Chevrolet Trailblazer. The Yakima on ramp is a unique bike rack and it's designed around its ramp. So this is stays on your vehicle. That way if you have those heavy electric bikes or just those bikes are kind of tricky to lift up onto a bike rack, this helps out with that. So we'll take a look at some of its different features, some different pros and cons of this bike rack, but we are gonna focus on the Chevrolet Trailblazer. That way you can make the best decision for the best bike rack for you, your different types of bikes, and your vehicle. The first feature we'll take a look at is the tilt away feature. Now, I always kind of struggle with this a little bit because it's a bit of a process involving two different knobs or two different levers. So the first is an easy one. That's just this pin here. Pull that out and let that hang. The second is gonna be this other pin where you have to pinch it and then pull it and then that will allow you to tilt the bike rack away. Once that's out, you can then drop the bike rack down. If this is heavy, that's something you're gonna have to think about. But this, tilting this bike rack away, allows you to access the hatch even with the bikes on. With the hatch up, you can now access your trunk and grab whatever you need, whether it's your waters, your helmets, your bags. Notice how much clearance we have between our handlebars and our pedals and our door. It helps that Mercedes-Benz has a really short door. But with that down, you just need to lift this up, put the first pin back into place, and then you can hit the road. So let's talk about the bike rack and the way our bike is mounted here. So this has a 66 pound weight capacity. So for your heavy electric bikes, awesome. If you are taking your vehicle off road though, keep in mind that goes down to about 40 pounds per bike, which is still pretty good. The way our bike is mounted is we have two wheel straps and then we have this frame mount. So this frame mount can move side to side, up and down and around as well to accommodate those different shaped frames. It is just up to you to figure out the best fit since it's gonna stand right here, whether you have it on the seat post or on the frame, that's something you're gonna have to figure out with your different bikes. So there's an attachment point on the rack itself for your ramp. So before we take our bike off, we're just gonna set up the ramp. We have this knob here and I'm just gonna go grab the ramp on this side lift it up out of its bolt and then you can choose whichever side you want to put this on whichever is easier for you this just pops in pops down and you're ready to go so now i'm ready to unstrap my bike so i start by the wheel straps press that lever lift that strap up kind of tuck that over to the side so it doesn't get caught up in the spokes that's one and then here is two and then get this frame so figure out like the best way to hold on to your bike for this, you press that button, you lift that strap out, you're going to have this mask, you can adjust that mask back and forth if that helps you out. I'm just going to tilt our bike towards our vehicle since we have so much clearance with our Mercedes Benz. Bring this down and roll it down. With your bike off, don't forget to put the ramp back and to tighten it down with that knob. All right, right, so that's all secured. Let's talk about the rack itself. First is gonna be the capacities. So we have our straps over here. These go around our wheels. Now, these can fit wheels or tires of up to 3.25 inches, although when you get to those taller or wider tires, I do recommend going ahead and picking up the Yakima Fat Strap Kit for this bike rack just to help out with that. So I talked about how you have to adjust your bikes back and forth just to fit where these masts are. If you have similar style bikes, it can be kind of tricky. The maximum wheelbase you can carry with this though is pretty wide up to 50 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this mast down. We have this other lever here. Just pull that lever, drop this down. You can see that this is still on the loose side. So everything can be adjusted by this knob here. So this allows you to tighten your frame mounts. So if you need to move them back and forth. 
So the on-ramp is a pretty compact bike rack. So let's take some measurements to see exactly how much length it adds to the back of our vehicle. I'm gonna measure over here at the rubber part of, or I guess the plastic part of our trailblazer. To the end of the rack, it sits at 27 inches. So this is a length you're gonna have to keep in mind whenever you're backing into your garage or trying to park into a tight spot. Don't forget that you have bikes as well as a bike rack behind you. Our ground clearance is gonna be measured from the end of the bike rack by this Yakima sign to the ground, 18 inches. Compare that measurement though with over here by the shank. Let me get closer. And that is 10 inches. So ground clearance is important because your hitch kind of sits close to the ground here. When you go up those steep inclines like your driveways and hills, your front's gonna go up, your back is gonna go down, and you wanna make sure that your bikes are sitting a little bit higher up off the ground. And then another feature of this bike rack is, what if you're not planning on taking your bikes out just yet, but you also don't wanna take your bike rack off? What you can do is you can fold this up into the compact or portable position. So we have those two, pins or levers we worked on yesterday uh, earlier so we take that first pin out we press this pin again and pull that out but this time we're gonna fold it up against our vehicle so it looks like it is gonna come close you have to make sure that your mast is in the right position and away from your vehicle and that's gonna be our closest point so from that mast to our door it sits at a half inch so still playing a clearance there, um, or it's not getting, making contact there. The length now added to the back of our vehicle is from where I measured earlier to the end of the rack, 10 and a half inches. So definitely more compact than when these, this was folded down. You'll want it in this position when you're just planning on driving around town and you don't wanna take up too much space. Here on our trailblazer, notice how our rear window is completely visible, awesome. Our taillights are visible as well. Now the downside of this rack and pretty much any rack on your trailblazer is that your license plate is going to be covered. So if that's gonna be a major issue for you, especially since the backup camera is covered as well, you can also just have this bike rack in the folded down position, but any bike rack is gonna cover that visibility in the upwards position. Don't forget before you ride to put your pin back into place and that way you have two forms of security keeping everything down. So let's talk about the hitch. So we have two options for the shank on this bike rack. You can get the inch and a quarter version or the two inch version. I always recommend the two inch version if you can, especially if you have a two inch hitch receiver. So this locks or tightens down into that hitch receiver using an anti-rattle bolt. Now, this lock right here is not included with our bike rack because you use a cable lock that wraps around your bikes and that goes into that anti-rattle bolt to secure both the bike rack and your bikes. But with that tightened down and I use a 15, 16 socket or a 24 millimeter wrench, we're gonna do a quick shake test. So as I shake our bike rack over here by the shank, I'm trying to move it, but I'm really just rocking the vehicle back and forth a little bit here. And that shows that it's nice, tight and secure. So always double check that, make sure that's tightened down before you drive away. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage or driveway. My personal thoughts about the Yakima on ramp is if you have those really heavy electric bikes and it's kind of hard to lift them up onto your bike rack, this is gonna be very helpful. Especially since the ramp stays on the rack, it's you're less likely to lose it like you can with some other racks. So other racks that have ramps are gonna be the Kuat NV. That's gonna be a bit more premium. If you're looking for something easier to tighten down with that frame mount, it can be kind of tricky. The Kuat NV with the additional access ramp 
might be better for you. But if you're just looking for something with a really good weight capacity, checks off all the boxes in terms of capacity, sizes, wheelbases, and has a ramp attached, the Yakima on ramp is a really good option. And that was a look at the Yakima on ramp two bike platform rack on our 2021 Chevrolet Trailblazer.